So in this video I'm going to test out the performance in Studio One 5 on the new M1 Mac, the MacBook Air, which is the fanless model. It's going to load up a default song, 48 kilohertz. Going to set the Samples are set to 16 at 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. Still got quite a high round trip latency on the Zoom H5. It's running off its own battery power. Um, I just it don't think it's a particularly well optimized interface for this kind of thing. It's not designed for it. It's a portable recorder, so I may end up installing Loopback on this, which means I'm going to have to mess around with the uh, security settings. Sorry if my stomach is growling in the background. Um, but uh, if I do do the security settings to enable loopback, I'll probably end up installing the uh, drivers for the Universal Audio Arrow. And I'll do a video on that, testing their software and what how it runs. Um, unofficially, it's supported but officially it isn't supported yet. So it requires this elevated security privileges. So yeah, 16 samples, 48 kilohertz. Not the best round trip latency in the world, but I'll have to test it out and see what it's like in real world while tracking through native plugins. Add tracks, eight tracks, and then I'll open the mix window. Got a nine insert effects of all default effects. In Studio One, I'll just load that up on every track. You can see down here that the CPU is jumping up. A little bit every time there was a bit of a spike again pardon my stomach I just drank some coke and um Entirely sure. Okay. So eight tracks of nine inserts on each track. Um, four, six, eight, nine. So seventy-two plugins, and nineteen percent CPU usage. So, I mean, for a laptop, that's impressive, especially because this code isn't running. It's not native code for the M1 Mac. It's uh. It's, it's being translated through the Rosetta translation layer, so. I mean, at 16 samples as well, so if I change the, the sample buffer to say 128, no difference, so that's interesting. See if I push it up to thousand and twenty-four. Oh, okay. So CPU usage is actually gone up with a lower or with a higher sample buffer. 
So let's try one, two, yeah. Back down again. So interestingly, a lower sample buffer seems to perform better than a higher sample buffer on these M1 Max. I'll be really interested to see what it's like in real world real world performance. Um, I'll try to get something set up soon where I'm recording like an acoustic guitar and a vocal or something and do a bit of mixing with it and then yeah, see how it performs. But so far with Cubase and Studio One, it's been pretty impressive. I mean, if I was doing a mastering project, which is what I usually use Studio One for, there's no way, like, I wouldn't be using this many plugins anyway, so it, it seems like it'd be perfect for mastering on. Um, I'll use the, like, Slate VSX headphones. It means I can portably master tracks wherever. So that's, that's cool. Um, in terms of real world performance for tracking and mixing, um, you don't normally want to be using like this much crap on a, on your inserts anyway. If you are, you're probably in trouble from the start. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool so far. Doesn't seem to be heating up at all, really. Maybe very slightly warm, but nothing crazy. I haven't noticed any glitchy behavior or anything. It's all running really smooth. And this is screen capturing as well at the same time using um, screenshot. So, yeah. That's Studio One Five. First impressions, run well. I'll get some of the third-party plugins and stuff tested soon. Um, in order to get audio with video, I'm gonna have to install Loopback, which means uh, giving Loopback elevated privileges. So I'm still looking into that to see how safe that is and deciding whether or not I want to do that to my fancy new toy. But yeah, cool. Hope I was insightful for people. Cheers.